Well, hello there, Jean. Okay. <laughs> How are you? Can you, can you hear me okay? Yep, totally. Oh, good. Can you see me? I'm in my car because my son's at soccer practice. I am going to get started and start this recording. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody real quick. So um, I want to start by um, welcoming Jenny Crane, the amazing Jenny Crane, who um, I have been kind of watching in this business for the last few years I've been involved and just in awe of her poise and her, um, her understanding and knowledge of not only the products but the business. And just being around her energy is so inspiring and her smile even, like right there, <laughs> um, is just, is just, really one that we want to be around and so they say you know your vibe attracts your tribe and we just love um hearing you and being around you and we when we saw you speak um in south carolina we all said we need you to help train us on presenting and that was your big you know, one of your big things you did at the convention so um Jenny, we are so excited to have you here. I'm gonna let you share a little bit about your history. Um, I know you were um, brought into the business by another woman that we all are so admire, Miss Carrie Dickey. She's actually your sister-in-law, which is amazing. Um, so you have such an incredible resource with her around as well. Um, so without any further ado, I'm gonna give all the time to you because we really want to um, take advantage of this opportunity having you here. So welcome to our Tuesday Tropical Bio Zoom. And, um, is yours. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. And I mean, oh my gosh, what an incredible leader you are. I have to say that seeing you girls in, in Charleston really was the highlight of my trip. Like, um, you know, I'm always connecting with different people, but there's something special about your group. And I definitely just, I'm so excited for you girls because you guys are just so real and you give off such an incredible energy. So stay true to that, you guys. And um, so I just feel blessed that you guys have asked me to be on here. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, and this is all going to tie into a little bit of the nuggets that I want to share regarding presenting. And, you know, this business for me has not always been peaches and daisies and, and fun. And in fact, there were moments in time, several moments in time where I almost literally quit this business. So I just want you guys to know is that your first training tip, you guys, is you have to stay true to this business, stay committed. I always like to explain to my team, you know, this, this commit, this business is committing, you know, to really understanding what we have our hands on here. So make sure you guys always stay, stay true to that. But my story, like I said, has not always been easy for me with this business. Um, you know, I don't, I joined in January of 2012 and my sister-in-law, Carrie Dickey shared the information with me. And at that time, my husband and I were going through a very, very rough patch in our life. You know, um, my background is, is um, real estate and mortgage, and I was in the mortgage industry for nine years um, and really was blessed in that industry. I started my own company by the time I was 26, um, and I was the primary wage, wage earner pretty much and did very well um, in that industry. However, uh, when the 2009 housing market crashed, uh, what happened, right? We literally were dependent upon that industry so much that uh, my husband and I, we lost everything. So we were in a bad place. We were in a really bad place financially when Carrie shared this information with us. And um, I'd never done network marketing before, you know, never knew what that was. You know, I heard about the, the here and there company, but uh, when I really took a look at, you know, the, the potential for building a business that um, is gonna, you know, able to create gener generational wealth and residual income, that spoke to me. You know, um, I did very well in the mortgage industry, but if I didn't go to work, I didn't get paid. And then of course it was dependent upon um, this entire industry that I didn't have control over. So I really saw something incredible with the opportunity. And I knew that if I was gonna put my time and effort and energy into something that this was gonna be it. So I signed on, I said yes to her in January of 2012. And I have to tell you, my, my journey has been super up and down and rocky. And as I look back on it, I know that every moment that I ever experienced in this business really taught me and led me what I needed to do and what I needed to be for my team. And this business is all about duplication, right? Well, most people that get in network marketing and that quit, I truly believe don't understand what, what's involved in growing into leadership in this business. And 
you can't skip the growing process, right? You guys write that down. There's no amount of magic formula that's going to create your success in this business that is not going to require you to get uncomfortable, right? To deal with the things that are going to make us feel pain. Um, you know, the growth and even presenting, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight. All of that requires experience and practice and getting uncomfortable. So if you're not willing to get uncomfortable, then you probably shouldn't be in this business and you should probably quit now. Not that I'm trying to be negative, but I'm just being real with you guys. So um, I can remember when I first started presenting. Now I was horrible, you guys. And this is kind of what I shared when I did the breakout session, but literally I would do a two hour presentation and cover every single thing about the science. And literally by the time that people left my presentation, they were sleeping. It was like the worst ever, but really it was a learning experience for me and understanding that when we're sharing the information here with Life Vantage, you guys, we have to keep it simple, right? We have such an incredible product and I know it's so easy to talk about and we can go on and on and on because there's so much to cover, but really, you know, people shut off. So my first tip in being a good presenter is for one, get out there, right? You have to practice. You have to be in front of the room. You have to get uncomfortable. And really, you know, that's really where you're going to be a dynamic presenter is when you learn how to connect with people, um, not only really in an informational level, but, a, but a, um, just connecting with their hearts. And when I started to do that, when I really started to understand one, who my audience was, and two, that this business is all about giving value to people, right? Your income is going to grow when you learn to give value to people. And I think so many times we, we look at this where we're like, oh, what's in it for me? Is this going to be the next person that's going to be the big one that's going to build my business? And, you know, what you have to understand is sometimes you get those people on your team that are going to grow into that. Um, as I did, I mean, I wasn't an overnight success. Trust me, it, it took a lot of growth and it took a lot of me getting uncomfortable. And thank God I had Carrie, you know, she always pushed me. I can remember the first time she told me I was doing a presentation. Um, I think I was like one month into the business and I looked at her like she was crazy. I'm like, no, I am not getting up there. I know not, like, you're so good. You know, why wouldn't you be the one to go up there and do this? Nobody wants to hear from me. What do I know? And she looked at me and she said, you know, Jenny, when I signed you up, I told you that if you wanted what I have, you have to do what I do. And at the end of the day, you guys, the person presenting is the person making the most money in the room. So I really want to inspire you guys to get uncomfortable. You know, don't just let Sarah take the lead. I mean, I'm not sure who does all of your guys' presentations out there, but step up as a leader. You know, that's really when my business started to grow is when I stepped into leadership and when I got in front of the room, became uncomfortable. And yes, I was bad before I was good. And I was good before I was great. And, you know, I even have room for growth as of now. We always have room to grow. And, and our presenting skills, like I said, are just going to get better and better uh, with time. And, um, you know, and I know it's one of those things for a lot of people. I know for my team, um, you know, pushing people into that role can be very, very uncomfortable for them. But that is literally where I've seen the most growth on my team. You know, um, you have to learn the concepts of presenting. You have to learn how to tell your story effectively. Um, you know, your story is the most powerful presentation tool that you have in this business because people don't buy products, they buy you, right? They're, they're going to join you on this mission. And if they're going to join you, you have to know your story. You have to approach them with confidence and passion and enthusiasm because that is what people want to be a part of. And I truly believe that's the magic that you girls have. I mean, I don't know if there's any guys on this Zoom. I don't mean to leave you guys out, but you have such a magnetic energy and such an authentic, authentic uh, way about you girls that hold true to that, you know, be genuine with people as you're sharing your story and people are going to connect with that. So those are a few of the tips that, you know, I wanted to, to bring in about presenting. Um, Sarah, I'm not sure if you want me to add anything specific or maybe touch on anything more. Um, I, I kind of incorporated my story into the whole training, but um, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So I don't know if you want me to add anything else to that. One of the things I would like to talk about a little bit more is social media, because that's really, really 
um, our team's focus. So we can get into maybe a little bit of that, but unless you wanted me to add anything else about the, the presentation part. Um, maybe just like if you had, you know, if you had 10 minutes with someone, what are some key things you would share? And if you had 30 minutes with some, you know, like when you see someone in passing, they're like, how are you? How's it been? Or well, I guess you wouldn't share in passing, but you know, like if you only had a brief amount of time and you wanted to share, what would that look like? Or yes. I don't know, any tips? That, you that's get? actually, that's a really great question. Um, I can remember, you know, especially when I was new in the business, one-on-one -on -one presentations for me were literally the same as my presentation starting out where it was two hours long. And I knew where I was going wrong when I made that 10 minutes that I had with that person about me in the sense that I was giving and spewing information. So to have a successful one-on-one -on -one presentation where you have a limit, limited amount of time, really that limited amount of time should be two things. One, find their pain, right? Find out what the person and who the person that you're talking to and what it is that's lacking in their life. Because you guys know that we have an answer for pretty much every issue that, the, that a person can experience, right? Whether it's financial issues, whether it's health issues. So get to know the person that you're talking with because ultimately you're really not going to be able to give somebody in 10 minutes. Uh, I mean, it may happen. I've seen it happen. 10 minutes, you got someone signing up, but you need to know most of what happens in this business happens in the follow-up, right? So you need to know exactly what you're going to be doing to follow up with that person. So I like to call it the 10 minute presentation, but really it's a 10 minute discovery process. You're understanding all about the person that's sitting across from you. And that's one of the things that I really had to learn to do was ask questions, right? Ask them so many questions, make it about them. You know, people want to feel validated. Our core as a human is to want to feel accepted and validated and loved. And when you make the person sitting across from you feel that way, that's the door. That is the door or the window that's going to be open. That is going to give that person. You're really just wanting to them to leave you with an open mind, right? So in that 10 minute process, having them leave with an open mind and understanding what it is that they want and need in life is going to enable you to properly present follow up and understand exactly you know, how you're going to take them through that discovery process, if that makes sense. And then, you know, of course, within a longer presentation, 20 to 30 minutes, you know, you're starting off by telling your story, right? I would say spend the most time on your story, right? Because that's what people are interested in. Tell your story, you know, real quickly. I mean, I got guys real quickly, company story should be less than three minutes, three to four minutes at the most. Um, and then the product story, we really have changed things about our product presentation because, um, you know, listen, people build multi-billion dollar businesses off of nail polish and hair stuff. Like ultimately people want to know what makes us different. So we really focus on the uniqueness of Nerf 2, Nerf 1 activation. We talk more about activating the body, you know, giving them simple ideas and, and, um, one of the things Scott and I talked about it in Charleston is, you know, use analogies, simple analogies that that person can leave and share with somebody else. Um, we make things too difficult. People are going to shut down. You know, simplicity really is the key in this business to move forward. Um, and clar clarity, you know, I can remember the first few people I shared with, they probably were so confused. They probably didn't even know what it was I was talking about. Um, and then, you know, as you're done with your presentation, always end it with a direct call to action. People need to know exactly what they're going to be doing when they leave you, right? Put them on the spot. Not that you're making them uncomfortable, but you really want them to understand what, what the next step is. And I feel, and I know that that was one of the big things for me to learn was it's not that they didn't want to sign up. We just never told them like, Hey, take out your computer. I was on a zoom with a girl the other day. And, you know, we did the whole third party and we talked about the business. And at the end of it, I said, look, take out your computer. It sounds like you're ready to sign up. And she did. Um, so, and, you know, so I, I really feel that part of doing a dynamic presentation is leading them into the next um, follow-up and, and really just understanding who it is that you're talking to. So I hope that clarified a little bit more that process. Absolutely. That was perfect. That was perfect. Um, do you want to talk briefly about Facebook and what you guys are doing or social media and what you guys are doing with that? And then we can open up for questions at some point. Absolutely. So 
our team is literally our system is social media. Um, we really, I mean, it's taken growth in me to understand how to utilize it properly, but you guys, if you're not utilizing it, reach out to me. Um, I'm not sure if you guys were ever added to LV social media strategies. It's the group that we put together for, um, all of life manage that has our training in it. Ray <laughs> Allen put it together. It's super awesome. Um, have you guys been added to that yet? I don't think so. Maybe you could send that through us, the link maybe, or how we can Yeah, I'll, I'll send the link. It's, it's pretty simple training, but, um, we're really utilizing groups, um, on Facebook to make those connections with people. Um, ultimately you guys on social media, you want to be connecting with the people that have the same, um, I always, well, we call it the avatar, but who is your perfect avatar, right? Who is it that you want to attract into this business? And then from there, we're really encouraging our team to go into these groups and add value. You guys, one of the biggest mistakes you're going to make on social media is selling on social media. People don't want to be sold. You need to add value. So just a, a quick tip there, but the Facebook groups really have been an incredible way um, to connect with people of the light of like mind and really get in and start those conversations in messenger. So if you're not utilizing Facebook groups, we've been training our team um, very, very specifically on how to utilize these groups, how to add value in the group and really how to be conscious of, of building those relationships with people that you have things in common with. So that's a really incredible tool as you're, you know, coming across people that you want to share this business with. Um, you guys, ultimately, there's an endless amount of people out there that need to hear this information and that are waiting for you. So if you're not utilizing Facebook groups, you know, I always tell my team, pick three things, you know, three things that you're passionate about, whether it's equine or horses, you know, whether it's animals or uh, maybe you're a homeschool mom, you know, join some homeschool mom, mom groups and start making relationships and d um, connecting with people in these groups, you know, and, and like I said, be very careful. Don't go in there to sell people. Um, I see these other companies out there just posting their products over blasting their Facebook. It's not the way to do it. Um, so, you know, we can even schedule another Facebook training where we're specifically getting into some of these ideas and, and how to really, um, you know, get that attraction marketing model to where people are being attracted to you. And that's really where the magic happens is when people are coming to you and saying, Hey, what, what is it that you're doing? And a lot of that comes back to the, the key terms in presenting, like you're going to have to be uncomfortable and put yourself out there. Um, and it, it's, it's not a comfortable thing. I can remember when I started social media, I remember the first post I made, I was like, Oh, almost like so scared to hit that, that post button. Uh, being vulnerable is really one of the hardest things. So, um, you know, if you haven't been using that, then I would just encourage you guys to get out there. Facebook lives are really the magic. It's the key to, to getting out in front of as many people as possible. And, um, I know it's not comfortable. I still get uncomfortable doing Facebook, Facebook lives. It might not seem like it, but, um, that's really one of the things we'll do challenges with our team, which have been really great where we challenge them you know, seven day challenge of going live every day. And it really has pushed people out of their comfort zone. It's been a really great um, contest. You know, we'll offer free um, products at the end of it and really give our team an incentive to get uncomfortable. But ultimately it's the growth that you get when you're, um, you know, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable and um, sharing who you are. Because like I said, from the very beginning, guys, that's what people are attracted to. People want to join you. Um, they want to be a part of you, you and your community and, and part of a greater good. So that's just a few tips on Facebook. I know we don't really have a ton of time. Um, I'd love to open it up for questions and, you know, questions if we can. Um, so I don't know if people have to unmute themselves, but Sarah, I'll turn it back to you. And if, if people want to ask questions, I'd love to answer questions. Yay. That's wonderful. Jenny, you are such a master. It's so great to hear you. You're so inspiring. Thank you. Um, those are perfect nuggets. That's exactly what I was talking about. You know, if you have that little window of opportunity where you are wanting to share that information. So, um, I can see pretty much everybody. So I'm going to, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Like I see Carrie, um, go ahead and ask your question. Okay. I want to say, um, Jenny. Yes. I want I would love for you to explain to people how it felt when you decided that you were done being a pro five, because I saw that day when you decided and you launched. So Thank I, would you, love to, I would love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, 
like I said, it hasn't always been roses for me in this business. And when I finally decided that I was going to take ownership of my business, um, you know, that I was going to take not only ownership, but that if I was going to attract the leaders that I wanted, I needed to literally show up every single day and do the actions that I wanted my team to do. And before that, it's not that I wasn't doing that. It's just, there was no consistency in that. And the thing is, you guys, that when you're building a team, they're watching every little thing that you do, right? Every single thing that, that you do. You're not, I tell my team all the time, there's certain people that come to me and say, I want one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And I said, I say, no, you don't even show up to the Monday night calls, right? So I, I made the commitment when I made that, that turn in my business, it was like, there was nothing that was going to get in my way that no matter what I was going to be successful in this. And I started doing the things that made me super uncomfortable. Number one, um, the things that I didn't want to do. And then really the biggest turn in our business was social media, you know, it was finally one of those things that I saw, wow, this could work. Like this is bigger than me. This is, I don't want to miss this boat with being able to utilize attraction marketing and utilize um, a network, a billion people on it. Um, I just, I saw it in that. So I have to say that definitely social media was a big part in that, that huge switch in our business along with the mindset, right? So you can get out there and talk all you want, but if you don't have the mindset, um, you're not going to have, uh, you know, the grit to build this business. You have to have the mindset. And a lot of it was really diving into personal growth and development, right? If I was going to teach my team, I first had to become a student to be a teacher. And that's what you guys need to understand with not being able to skip the growing process. You can't skip not learning how to present and grow and be an elite distributor, right? You can't skip that. You can't fake it. So you really have to understand, allow yourself to go through that process. And those were really the key turning points for me in my business. And, and really was that like transition into the next level. And even now going in, you know, building towards that elite pro eight, it requires a whole different skill set and mindset. So there's never, what I love about this industry is there's never um, an opportunity to not need to grow. Do you know what I mean? Like we're always in that moment in our business, whether you're a pro three, pro two, pro four, pro five, you're going to need to grow into that next level, right? You're going to need to be that leader that's going to be able to handle a pro seven business or a pro eight business. So it's always about growth and, you know, it, it's, it's uncomfortable. And I have to admit, like that when the company asked me to train, I'm like, oh, I don't like, I literally didn't sleep for a month when I had to speak in front of five, the, you know, do my, it was horrifying. Like it was not comfortable for me as much as it may seem so. So, um, you know, but you can't skip that growing, that growing process in your business. So that was really the turning point for me. That was a good question, Carrie. You know me, girl. That's why I asked that. I know. I saw you. I was like, oh my God, there she goes. Okay, there she goes. It's I'm about coming. time. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Um, is there anybody else? If you'd like to unmute yourself, you can just go ahead and start asking. Anybody want to ask a question? I have one, but I was going to wait and let other people ask first. <laughs> awesome. Ask away. Anybody else want to go before I do? Sure. I have a question. Kathy from Anaheim. Hi. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Hi, how are you? So, you know, I know, you know, we're, we're using a lot of technology today. And like you said, you're using a lot of social media to uh, move your business up. So um, I just have a question, maybe, you know, an answer to that. How are the rest of the leaders who started, you know, with the company and some of them went all the way to the top within like 22 months or 24 months without really using uh, the social media tools uh, back, you know, 10 years ago, because um, we're, we're reaching the, you know, our 10 year anniversary. Um, do you know any information about that? Because, you know, yes. there's a lot of people that are hustling and, and doing presentation and getting probably lots of people in front of them and um, have not used the social media until just recently in the last probably five years or right. so. So I was just wondering how they got to the top, like in a very short <laughs> That's a really, time. That is a really good question, Kathy. And I asked myself that, and, and I've had this discussion with many other people is it's not that the core concept, concepts of network marketing change, it's that our world has changed, right? To build this business, you have to go where the people are. Now, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when, you know, Carrie was building her network, people didn't use technology, right? It was a different world. Well, we're living in a different world and network marketing is having to morph into the techno technology, technological revolution, right? I mean, that's where people are doing 
meetings now. People aren't leaving their home to go to meetings, not even in the corporate world. So I believe that it's because the world has changed and that requires growth and change, um, you know, within us as leaders is to understand that, you know, people are on social media. That's how they give and receive information now. It's not any other way. So we're either going to grow with where, or go where people are, or we're going to stay stagnant and spin our wheels and, and really leverage ourselves through so, so, social media and through that huge network is, is really a powerful thing. So I truly believe that unless any leader, whether they're old school or new school, they've got to get with the times because, you know, at the end of the day, we're living in a different world now. So that's what I think that, that where that difference there is. Does that make you, sense? I think you got it completely right. I, I thought so, but I want to kind of like hear if you've heard what you've heard. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Of course. Thanks, Kathy. Um, anybody, hands up. I can unmute you if you want. Or Nina. Hi, Nina. Oh, Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, okay. I can. I My can question you. is, um, what is your ideal home meeting? Like, what is the length that you suggest? And do you show the ABC primetime video? Um, just some of your thoughts on that. Okay, that's a good question too. So um, I have to be honest, I don't do many home meetings. Um, I am doing a home meeting next week or yeah, next Wednesday in San Clemente, if any of you girls have anybody um, in San Clemente area. But to be honest with you, I'm in such a like direct, um, I'm on a mission to really leverage technology because I'm a stay at home mom, right? And I'm driving all over California. You guys don't even know the traffic here is horrible. Um, for me and my team, it's just so much more effective for me where I'm at to utilize. And I don't want to say don't do home meetings. This is just, I'm being authentic. I'm being real with you. So our team, because most of my team's on the East coast, um, and literally, I think I have maybe like one small pocket of team in Huntington beach. Um, we don't do a ton of home meetings. However, I believe that the proper home meeting should be no longer than 45 minutes, no longer. Right. So starting on time. Um, I do like to show the ABC clip. I think that that's really our history. It's what makes us unique and great. Um, and then from there, just, you know, no longer than 45 minutes. And we really kind of, um, the home meetings that we do do, or that my team does do, we really tailor it, you know, similar to the presentation that we give on zoom. So it really is the same thing. The only difference is that we're not meeting in person. And then a lot of that too is because of where I live, you know, Southern California to get over to, the, to San Clemente. It's like a three hour drive on a, on a Thursday night. So we really utilize a lot of the Zoom meetings. However, with in-home meetings, um, I know your guys' community is so tight knit. I miss that sometimes the in-home community thing, you know, in-home meeting. Um, but definitely just my biggest tip is just keep it simple, get to the point, share what's most important. If it's not necessary to say, don't say it. I hope that helped. Awesome. Thank Your baby's you. adorable, by the way. Oh, she's so cute. That's soft. She's so cute. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Um, yes. When you talk about Facebook Lives, what, like content-wise, like you say don't sell your business on Facebook necessarily, don't be selling, but so are the Facebook Lives just talking about your life? Like I'm at my daughter's soccer game and I'm like, oh, it's raining again. You know, like what am I, what do I talk about on my Facebook Lives? Absolutely. Well, I, I like to mix it up. Um, I've been on this thing where I started what I call the wellness revolution. I'm not sure if a lot of you guys follow me, but um, I really, so every Friday I come and I, I either interview somebody that has something to um, really change wellness, right? My whole thing is all about wellness. And um, so that just providing value with who you are. So that's part of what I do. And then I like to intermix things about the opportunity, right? Um, leveraged income is a huge topic. People want freedom. Um, so really mix it up to, to be authentic to who you are and the story that you want to tell. And that's really how I set my Facebook lives up. Like who's the person I want to attract? Like what's the message that I want to put out and how can I um, utilize that to grow my business. One of the best books that I've ever read that really clarified my mission and what I wanted to share. You guys have to order this book. It's called building a story brand by Donald Miller. Um, it's, he's a top selling author. And in this book, he talks about choosing your five main ideas that you want the mission and the, 
the vision and all of the things that you want to share and break it down into five main topics, right? Because I feel like so many people as they're building their brand and, and building their, their um, audience, they're, they're all over the place, right? They're talking about too many things that can like, what does this chick even do? You know, she's talking about this and then this. So be clear in the message you give on Facebook live and then understand that, you know, maybe pick your five main things, you know, whether it's wellness, uh, whether you're passionate about yoga, you know, and then you're intermixing your lives to add value that way. I hope that answers your question. Absolutely. Um, anybody else have a question and want to unmute? Raise their hand and I can unmute you. Kristen. Awesome. Kristen Stanley. Oh, I'm unmuting. Oh, you're unmuting. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Hi. Thank you. That was so great. Um, so I love watching all of your Facebook lives. I think they're just so educational. And I know that you always kind of, you always do such great topics on just overall health. Um, and then, but you tie it in with like oxidative stress, which I love. I was just wondering, like, are those your, your people that you get on? Like, I know you just had the, um, what was she, um, when you're talking about the Dr. rest and plant? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So is she on your team? Like, is she in Life Vantage? Like, are most of your speakers Life Vantage, but um, like, are they all on your team or are they just on? The That's company? a good question. I used to do a lot of interviews outside of the team, but I'm really trying to focus on building my team's network and getting things out there. So as much as I can, I interview people um, from our group. So she, yeah, she is on my team. So we work, you know, we're building her business as we're getting out there and doing these Facebook lives because we're, you know, getting her voice out there. So yeah, I try to work as much within my network and my team because, you know, ultimately if you're interviewing all these other people from Life Vantage, you're really giving business to them. And I hate to say that. I mean, it's not all about being selfish and, and me, 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 but I really changed that. And that was a really good decision because you just want to be careful with, with what you're putting on your page because anytime you're connecting somebody with someone else, potentially, you know, somebody that's going to see your video that's not on your team, well, they could join that potentially. So you, you got to be careful with that. That was a good question. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask one more quick question. Um, and then anybody else can, but back to the Facebook lives for a minute. For those of us that haven't established ourselves like you, who like aren't necessarily in a position to interview somebody or something like that. Is there any other thing you suggest while we're, you know, like pro ones, pro twos, pro threes, pro fours, even as we're just growing ourselves yes. personally and our business a little bit, what the layman, what do you propose the layman? Yes. That is a really good question. And literally there's no skipping the growing process. It took me literally probably two years to start really building an audience and a following on Facebook. So my biggest tip is for pro ones, pro all the people that are just getting started, it's getting started. It's literally just the consistency of doing the posts, right? Like it doesn't have to be Facebook lives. I mean, just doing your posts, one post a day, stepping out and like, you're not going to be great until you get good. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to require that growing process and ultimately just stepping out of your comfort zone and being consistent with posting. So, um, you know, and, and like I said, keeping it simple yet being consistent, that is literally one of the most important tools when you're building on Facebook is the consistency, you know, because you're going to get those people that you think aren't watching that are watching. So that's consistent follow-up. So I would just say, get out there, um, get trained on the algorithm and like how you can maximize that with what you're posting. It's probably too much to go into tonight, but, um, maybe we could schedule like more of a detailed, um, uh, training on, on Facebook, if you guys want. That would be great. I think that would be a wonderful, um, wonderful thing to do soon. I see. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to the Smurf Smoothie. Yay. Smurf. Aloha. Thank you so much for sharing. Hi. And I, hi. Um, my question is, you know, it kind of just bounces off of what you've just been talking about, about sharing on Facebook. And I've, um, I just wanted to know about how um, the transition was for you um, from going from having a successful, you know, um, real estate uh, business to, you know, obviously the, the times change and whatnot. But 
to transitioning that in such a way that you still held um, poise and respect within your community because you had been, you know, obviously asking them for their business on a whole different level. And now you're asking for business in, in a field that they're like, whoa, I didn't even know you did this or, you know, so I guess, how did you make that transition um, seem credible? Right. And there's really no, I mean, that's a really good question because I think initially I was a closet network marketer when I, you know, like literally like a little bit of shame, like people kind of knew. And it wasn't until I made the transition of being in a hundred percent. There's really no easy way. I mean, your credibility is going to come with your posture and your passion period. So once you, I would say be a student of network marketing um, I had to learn, like I said, another entirely different industry that I had not done before. So I became a student. I educated myself on podcasts. Be a student and understand that your passion, your pa your pa passion, and your posture, no matter what it is, if you come with with that posture, people are going to listen to you. So, and there's no easy way to go about that. Like you're either, you know, they're going to either know that you're you're all in, or maybe you know, people aren't going to follow somebody that's half in, half out. They're not because they sense that. So if you're a little bit lacking, maybe on the confidence part and like, oh my gosh, what is this person's going to think of me, which we all do, we all have, um, then you just need to build that belief because my belief's unshakable and people can sense that people want to follow somebody that knows where they're going. So, you know, dive into the, the education part, dive into, to, um, falling in love with the industry because then it makes you proud. And then you're out of the closet and everybody, you know, they respect that. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Thank you so much. So unless there's any other pressing questions, well, oh, I see Sarah raising hand. Jenny, do you have a few I, more minutes? No, I actually have to hop off to get my okay. time. But, um, I can see that you're looking out the window. <laughs> you're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. We're so grateful. And, um, if anybody um, has any other questions, you're welcome to, I mean, I'm not going to send really, me a message. Yeah, they Facebook can send me message. a message on Facebook. Yeah. And we can schedule this again. I had so much fun with you ladies. It was awesome. And it looks like Tuesdays at this time is a good time for you. To join yeah. Perfect. It'll give me something to do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. We're Thanks, so grateful. Girl. Thank you everyone for signing Thank on. You. Love you, girls. Thank you. Thanks, Kitty. I'm coming to visit. Come to Oahu. Yes, you are. I'm yeah. coming. I will let you know. I'm going to talk to the dates with my husband, and I'll come out. I can't wait. Okay. Uh, Bye. There was Thank there you. was one guy here. There yeah, was one guy here. here. Hi, guy. You're mantra, awesome. mantra from Kauai. <laughs> and uh, you. thank you so much for adding value. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I love you guys. All right. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. That was great. Aloha.